In this video, I'm going to talk about something known as the single source of truth principle in software development. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about Android, but this kind of is the same thing across any platform. So, um, so you should get a good idea if you're just here to see what that principle is. Uh, keep in mind, this video is part of a course that's on my website. It's a course where I build an Android application that interacts with a REST API on the internet. The architecture is MVVM, otherwise known as Model View View Model, and it also has a local database cache of all the data from the internet, and that's going to be using SQLite and the Room Persistence Library. If you want a link to that course, it's going to be in the description of this video, but this video can also stand alone. I'm going to talk about just that single source of truth principle. So if that's all you want to know about, then uh, this is still the video to watch. All right, so what is this single source of truth principle? Well, um, in software development, Android development, any kind of any kind of software development in general, there's usually more than one data source that uh, the application or the, the software in general can get the data from. In the context of the app that I built in the course that I just talked about, we're going to be retrieving data from a REST API from the internet. So it's a web service where it gets information from the internet. And then there's also going to be a local database cache saved on the phone of all that data from the internet. So the takeaway there, there's two sources, there's two possible sources of where that data can come from. Now, when it comes to the single source of truth principle, um, it's obviously a single source. So that data needs to come from a single source. But in the application that I just just described, there's two sources. So how does that work? How does how does that make sense? So in the context of what I just said, the single source of truth principle would mean that that data is going to come from a single source. And in the case of the Android app I described, that would mean the data is going to come from the database cache. So the only data, the only data that the user sees on the screen is going to be from the database cache. Now you're probably wondering, well, if it's only coming from the database cache, why is it retrieving information from the internet, from the REST API, if it's only ever going to be viewed from the cache? That doesn't really make sense. That's, that seems a little confusing, and I'm sure you have questions about that. So what's the point of a system like that? Why look at the cache when it could come from the network? And uh, I'll pull up a diagram here just so you can kind of, it'll help me describe what I'm talking about. So in the context of the app that I'm building in the course, you have a, a web service, a REST API that can retrieve the data, and then you also have a local database cache. But the only data that they see is from the cache. So I'll just kind of run you through what happens when, in the application when they want to view some data. So suppose they want to view some data. So they make a request using the app. They say, I, you know, in the case of this app, it's a recipe application where it displays recipes like, uh, like for cooking. So if they wanted to look up recipes that had, you know, cookie recipes, for example, they could search cookies. And then that data would then uh, come from the local database cache. After it's retrieved from the cache, a network request will be made in the background where it refreshes that data and then inserts it into the cache. So the user only ever sees the data in the cache, even though there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. So they look at the cache, they get the data from the network, they're still looking at the cache, and then that new data is inserted. <laughs> Whoops. The new data is inserted into that cache. So they see the updated data, but it comes from a single source. Or sorry, it's, it's viewed from a single source, but it's coming from two possible sources. So that's a good example of the single source of truth principle. Now, why would you want to implement a system like this? Why not, you know, view the cache when it needs to, view the network when it needs to? Why not bounce between the two and, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever also, <laughs> what other sources you also can get data from? Got a little tongue tied there. Um, so, number one, when it comes to Android development, is this provides a very consistent, fast user experience because if for some reason the network's down, the user is just going to look at the cache. And that, that request is going to be very fast. It's going to be pretty much immediate when they look at that local database cache. Um, and then also you get the added advantage of having that updated data when the network is up. So it's a consistent, fast user experience. Also, when it comes to Android development, this allows you to design a really clean architecture, a really clean code structure. So it keeps everything nice and separated and testable. And it especially works really well with the model view, view model architecture, otherwise known as MVVM, which if you're familiar with my videos, you know that that is my favorite architecture to use for a lot of reasons. I have videos on all the reasons why I like it. So uh, definitely check, take a look at my playlist and you can see uh, why I like MVVM 
and why I think it's the best architecture. So when it comes to Android development, those are a couple examples of why you would want to use this structure and why you'd, you would want to abide by the single source of truth principle. All right, so that's it for this video. I just want to make kind of a short one talking about the single source of truth principle uh, with respect to Android development or any development, any software development in general. Uh, if you're watching this this as a as if you're watching this as a video on YouTube, uh, this is part of a full length course on my website where I, where I um, build a an application that accesses a REST API. It has a local database cache, uses MVVM architecture, Retrofit two. Lots of really cool stuff, really valuable developer skills. So if you're interested in that course, there'll be a link in the description of this video. Check that out. And if you are if you don't care, you don't want to watch the video, that's cool too. Check out my free videos on YouTube. I got lots of free ones. I got free ones on my website too. You can check those out. And uh, if you're watching this video as part of the course, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be posting this on my website as well, uh, in the next video, I'm going to get started building a helper class for assisting, for facilitating all, the, all of those requests. So like to the cache or to the network.